Paizo of Pathfinder fame is the latest in a long and seemingly unending list of progressive companies that turn out to be absolute hellholes to work at. <laughs> Just keeps happening. It's weird. It's almost as if there's some kind of communality here in some way, shape or form. And bear you in mind as well, Paizo is a very progressive company, introducing such things as the battle wheelchair and hearing aids, incidentally into a fantasy setting where these ailments could be cured like that. Oh well, minor insignificant details I have no doubt, and as a complete little old quinky dinky wink, the workers of Paizo are currently trying to unionize. Oh. Oh, you, you don't say. So, let me get this straight here. Uh, the workers are trying to form an organization specifically made to further their own uh, influence and power within the company, and simultaneously, a uh, bunch of dirt suddenly comes shooting out of the ground in hidden nooks and crannies and begins to besmirch the company's reputation. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. Well, there you go. To be fair, the uh, Walker's playbook has remained fairly inert for quite some time now, so this brand new and fresh chapter is an interesting addition to the playbook, absolutely, and a welcome one as well, as it might potentially, over the course of God only knows how many years, inform the brighter amongst the company's upper echelons that, huh, Hiring unfaithful servants ends up biting us in the arse more often than not. It's strange, I know, but there you go. Can't argue with history, eh? Though, 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 to be equal, fair and level here, there are some fairly serious accusations being leveled against Paiso, some of which do sound to have a fair bit of merit, although they also come with a pretty large caveat. Uh, one woman alleges that she was expected to work until 10pm on Fridays and over the weekends for much of her years-long tenure. That sounds pretty goddamn sucky, working until 10 on a Friday and then being asked, hey, could you come in over the weekend? <laughs> See, this is why I actually prefer regulation over unions in this. Um, over here in the civilized world, we simply had a system where the government and the companies had to sit down with the workers and figure out, all right, um, this is the amount of overtime we can reasonably expect over the course of a month and so on and so on. Because overtime is sometimes simply just necessary. If you want the company to be able to get out the product it needs to pump out to stay afloat, Sometimes, you know, the schedule is an absolute bust. <laughs> More often than not, the schedule is an absolute bust. Now, of course, there are steps you can make to alleviate this situation, and you should, but I tend to be an opponent of unions in general, but... Another former Paizo employee says she left because of moral compunctions, and this really is the most resounding piece of damning evidence as well. Then also complains that diversity hires were treated like tokens. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I mean... What can you do, I guess? Apparently, several of the female employees, the black employees and the homosexual employees, felt that they were simply hired just to be token characters, to be brought along to conventions or to interviews or for streams, where they were like, oh, we need a woman for this stream. You know, just to tick that particular box. Because that turns out to be what uh, diversity inclusion, more often than not, <sighs> becomes. There is also some complaint about the payment levels. Sources say Paizo has offered $35,000 for a full-time job based in the Seattle suburb of Redmond within the last three years, and a leadership position getting paid $39,000 a year. Now, that's pretty awful uh, by my standards. I mean, in Norway, a leadership position, you'd probably be looking at... Uh, 
800, uh, no, 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 800, um, 80,000 bucks. I'm, you know, trying to do the conversions in my head round about, and the average would be 40, 50, very circa in my previous field of employment, so, you know, variations, obviously. Apparently, the living wage in this area is $40,000. Now, I'm very, very skeptical to anyone bringing up a living wage, because that tends to include a whole lot of assumptions and value judgments as well, but apparently the average rent for an, rent, rent for an apartment is $1,700. That is a bit more of a you know, proper example. Now, obviously, the average is going to be wildly misleading, because it's going to include the absolute top end as well, but $1,700 bucks for an apartment each month is it's pretty uh, pretty stiff no doubt about it this is uh, these are low salaries which exacerbates the situation not only are the token employees treated like tokens but they are not paid a whole lot for it either mm -mm -mm -mm. now the article does try to talk a little bit about the wizards of the coast as well but they haven't really gotten any insiders there presumably because wizards of the coast are a hell of a lot better at keeping the whip hand steady even though they are an even more progressive company even going so far as to include a bit of map pride in their judges program well however there are some problems here you see this has caused a lot of problems as Pathfinder and Starfinder RPG production is frozen according to senior developers. This is due to the uh, the union and now a strike amongst the freelance workers. Now the freelance workers are both the actual employees who do freelance stuff on the side and actual like... Uh, quote unquote full time freelancers that are hired to do particular jobs for uh, Pathfinder. Apparently, they do not have enough people on staff to do a lot of this. Uh, Paizo can't operate in an environment. We can't just assign 10,000 word org place now, 35,000 word SF adventures, 50,000 word uh, Pathfinder 2 adventures to new untested freelancers. And many of these freelancers were apparently just intrinsic to the production of the company. They can't work without them. And some of them were in the middle of projects with upcoming deadlines, and some even have completed manuscripts. Now, this is apparently being done in order to try and support the unionization effort. Initially, they had a list of specific list uh, demands, which included hiring a diversity officer. Oh, Yes, that'll help. The company already can't pay to hire enough full-time employees to actually do what they need to do to make the wheels turn around. So, let's demand they hire a diversity commissar who will hire yet further people based upon their skin color and sexuality rather than their skills. Mm. Brilliant. Absolutely genius. It'll become even more genius as we get to the next piece of this as well. But now, they update their demands, they'll all come back to work if Paizo recognizes United Paizo workers. Now, there is a problem here, because if they actually did stop in the middle of project, upcoming deadlines, or are withholding manuscript, assuming they have a signed contract with Paizo, what I would do is ring-a-ding-ding up my lawyer and sue the ever-living shit out of every single one of them for breach of contract. Because just say, oh, we're going on strike because uh, somebody else is trying to unionize. Not good enough. Not good enough in the slightest. Uh, though, with the caveat, maybe I don't know this particular part of US law or state law, I don't know, but over here, you don't get to sign a contract and then go like, oh, I'm on strike now. No. You're going to need a pretty damn good reason to try and pull that kind of nonsense. Now, there is also some suggestions that apparently these people are so pivotal to Paizo's operation that they can't afford to piss them off, in which case, you know, they're going to have to handle it with a lot more uh, decorum than that. But here's the really big thing. There is a, another thread as hill here, hill here, from Mark Sifter, Paizo Design Manager, where he basically explains that 
It's not because there's a bunch of greedy ass uh, people at the top of Paizo simply hoovering up all of the money and just going like, ah, oh, we, we own all of the money, you get nothing. It's that people aren't willing to buy their product. Did you know Paizo's beautiful high quality hardcover rule books with tons of color art and so much love and quality in the content cost less per page than the original d and pamphlet from 1974? I don't mean with inflation, I mean less, period. So they are spending not a whole lot of money on this. Like, these cost less than the original pamphlet. And yet, the razor sharp margin in the industry, the low amount of people are willing to pay for these books, is a huge factor in the poor pay. People simply aren't willing to pay what these books are theoretically worth to pay these people a living wage. Again, very heavy quotation marks and all of this. And they also mentioned that even if 1% of the fan base would like to pay more, if that alienates the other 99%, they're screwed. In other words, what this really is, this is not really a problem with the company necessarily. It might be, you know, but Paizo needs to pump out these products on a really, really tight schedule as this post goes on to explain. To do this, they need a lot of overtime, they need a lot of freelancers in addition to their some 50 odd employees to even have a hope of keeping themselves buoyant and you know, fiscally responsible. If any of this disappears, the company is dead. And if you're already dealing with margins that low, hiring a diversity officer, much less going for token hires, shit, this is a case in which you need to be firing people, a lot of people. And that incidentally is also one of the reasons why the union is being formed, as they are trying to look into the specific reason why people are being fired. Now, in a case like this, if you are actually in a situation where you are producing a product and people are not willing to buy it for the price you're selling it, really, you need to, and if you raise the price, you're going to lose 99% of your fan base. This is probably hyperbole, but, you know, going out from that. You need to fire a lot of people. You need to scale down on a lot of stuff, like the, the high-quality color artwork. Right, cut it. You cannot afford it. Simple as. Like, if this is not a business, it's not a business. This is a Dungeons and Dragon-esque role-playing game. You probably don't need all of the color artwork to go like, Black woman, you're Black Paladin. No, diversity is not going to help you here. A union is not going to help you here. In fact, this sounds like the kind of scenario in which a union will straight up just kill the company. Oh, you mean we now have to pay the employees even more because they're going to have to pay into a union fund as well? It's going to make it even more difficult for us to trim the fat and we might have to hire a diversity officer? Shit. I mean, hell, if they get away with that, Paizo is probably absolutely screwed. And that's the problem, isn't it? So much diversity, so many combat wheelchairs, so many hearing aids, so many people hired to make their products as diverse as possible. They can't even afford to pay their employees. They have to rely on like 40 freelancers to do this. And people don't want to buy it for a more expensive price. Right, so your product is ass, you're not pulling in the wider audience, the mythical wider audience, and you are not able to compete. You are now at the point where your employees, also hired for tokenistic reasons, are in open revolt because you can't pay them because your product isn't appealing enough. <laughs> I mean, hey. This is the kind of death spiral that I quite like seeing because, again, who knows, maybe other companies will take a look at this and think to themselves, hold on, seems like an awfully bad idea. <laughs> okay, Pine, so a little bit of free advice here. Again, if all of this is true, if you can't afford to do this, cut the fat immediately. Trim it. You can't afford it. You can't afford it. Diversity is damnably expensive, it turns out. Slash, at this point, a solid 10 people, 50, 10 of them, gone. Freelancers, cut down on it. 
find an equilibrium where you can get enough freelancers to produce um, artwork at a sufficient quality, probably cheaper than you currently are, skip the colors, again diversity is awfully expensive, and come back to a point where you realize, okay, we, we're financially stable now. We can begin to expand slowly but surely with in-house artists to provide slightly improved quality. You gotta walk before you can run. Until next time, I have been Arch. Thank you all very much for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon. Till then, have a good day.